the incomparable Charlie Chan. The American Broadcasting Company presents the incomparable Charlie Chan, detective, philosopher, modern Chinese sage in a new and exciting series. Join the famous detective every day at this time, Monday through Friday, as he combines the wisdom of the East and the science of the West in a thrilling and dramatic chapter from the adventures of Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan humbly gives you greetings and extends warm welcome. It is wisely written, man who wishes something for nothing invariably receives nothing. Yet today, this person received free gift, which was death. But first word from honorable announcer. The plumber is a good fellow. His charges are fair. But to have to call him to clean up sink and other waste pipes doesn't make sense when you can do it yourself with the plumber's enemy. This week's adventure, The Man Who Moved Mountains. There is an unofficial department in police headquarters in San Francisco. It has no name. It is unknown to the public. It is managed by Inspector Charlie Chan, and its business is to take care of the office calls and curious complaints which cannot be fitted into regular police routine. So it is this early morning that Charlie Chan's daily lecture to his number one son on deportment and the 15 rules of guidance for the young is interrupted by the shrill ring of a telephone. Charlie Chan speaking. Inspector Chan, will you please tell me if this is the end of the line? Pardon, please. These dull ears do not comprehend. Who is this? I'm trying to make a complaint to the police. I've been switched to three different people already. I'm beginning to feel like a phonograph. Ah, yes. Understand now. So sorry you have suffered at hands of official red tape. I assure you this is end of line. May I make a complaint now? I am Professor Arthur Moore. Address, please, Professor Moore. Moore's filling station and cabin on Pacific Boulevard. It's just this side of city limits. From address, this person assumes scholastic title merely honorary. Never mind about my title. I want to make a complaint. These sympathetic ears await words, Professor Wu. I've got a kind of historical show behind my station. Statues of famous people and famous events. It's a pretty show for the customers. Uh, continue, please. One of my statues is coming to life. Uh, pardon, please, Professor Moore. These ancient ears thought they heard you say... You heard me, all right. That's what I said, and that's my complaint. One of my statues is coming to life. Uh, this most odd. Can you account for peculiar conduct? If I could, I wouldn't be calling the police. You better get out here, Inspector, and look things over. I don't want such things going on in my hall of history. We'll proceed to address at once, Professor Moore. We'll also remark if statue is really coming to life... There will be no further need for you to reproduce history. We'll be making the same. Statues coming to life? That guy must be crazy, huh? Perhaps. Well, he's got to be crazy. There couldn't be any other explanation. Now, could there, Pop? It is written, man who jumps to conclusions lands in ignorance. Your father waits for evidence of eyes. All I gotta say is we're wasting our time. We should have sent the straitjacket squad. Perhaps. Garish filling station ahead appears to be object of search. Huh? Kindly navigate car into same. Okay. Golly, what a joint. <laughs> Looks like a small time Coney Island. Uh, Professor Moore's Hall of History visible behind heaven. 
Your father perceives large mass of painted statues. I'm right, Pop, I bet you. Uh, it'd take a lunatic to run a place like this. Uh, wide awake joint, isn't it? Hey! Anybody here? Hey! Wake up, Professor! Please, hmm? please some wholesome shouting, please. Uh. Person within tavern approaches. It's about time. Back with you, gentlemen. Sorry to waste it even a fraction of your time. Time and tide wait for no man, as the immortal Chaucer said. Uh, door up. A uh, seeking gentleman named Professor Arthur Moore. Before you in the two two solid place. To quote the rare Ben Johnson, Professor Arthur Moore, writer, lecturer, astrologer, man of peace and soldier of fortune, inventor and soul distributors. Of Moore's analgesic medicine, for mumps, measles, malaria, and all diseases beginning with M. Uh, what did I tell you, Pop? Soul inspiration and executor of Moore's Hall of History. A faithful, graphic, and three dimensional panorama of history, comprising entertainment for the old and education for the young. It's free and for nothing, gentlemen. A solemn reminder of the grandeur of bygone days. Uh, forgive this person for interrupting highly enjoyable lecture, Professor Moore, but must get down to business. Ah, business, business. The last refuge of cowards, as Tom Payne put it. Uh, at your service. This person, Inspector Charlie Chen of police, at scientist. Why does consternation cause features to collide? Professor Moore. Uh, you, you got me wrong, Inspector. Like, you don't want me. Uh, I swear everything's on a square. If it's a question of a fix, I can't make You it. are laboring under peculiar misapprehension, Professor Moore. This person has no designs on you. Oh, no? Shall we ten and son arrive at your own request? My request? Yes, yours. You're crazy. I'm crazy. Oh, wait, please. Professor Moore. Did you not telephone police headquarters half hour ago and request immediate assistance? Me? Certainly not. You did not inform these ears that very odd events transpired in all of history? Are you kidding, Inspector? What events? You did not complain that statue in all of history was coming to life? Coming to life? Now look, Inspector Chan, I think somebody's been pulling your leg. How could a thing like that happen? This person arrived to discover same. Well, there's nothing the matter with my hall of history, Inspector Chan. Come on out, see for yourself. Will do. But very much afraid valuable time wasted by misguided Joker. Come, son. <laughs> Sake, who'd call a stupid trick like this a joke? It is written, practical joke is anything that can make a fool laugh. Right this way, Inspector. Uh, what are those statues made of, Professor Moore? Sand and glue, son. You mix them up and wet them. Then bottle them. I uh, paint them myself, too. Used to have a pretty smart act in the two-a-day big time. Sand sculpture. Professor Arthur Moore and his model. Ah, uh, yes. This inefficient brain perceived strong flavor of tencho in words, Professor Moore. Now, uh, here, Inspector, is where the Hall of History begins. <clears throat> On your left, ladies and gentlemen, an accurate rendering of life in the glacial epoch of the caveman. These here savage figures were constructed under the supervision of university doctors of anthropology. Uh, 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 anthropology. Yeah. What? It's anthropology. The study of man. Uh, yes. Well, as my young friend has said, this is the study of man. And what better study than this classical and beautiful picture of ancient Greece? Uh, it's, uh, the, 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 the professor, they're, they're wearing Roman helmets. And why not, my young friend? Was it not Julius Caesar who so aptly said... The Greeks had a word for it? Caesar never said anything of the kind. Directly he said before us an inspired Greek production of the Crusaders. Those gallant knights of the round table whose invasion of the Holy Land in 1066 will ever be a lesson for young and old alike. These figures are accurate reproductions from drawings discovered in the famous Magna Charta and represent... Professor Moore, the gentleman asks a question. Ask nothing but silence a moment. What's the matter, Pop? Huh? Stop a moment, son. Anything wrong, Inspector? Hmm? Wait. Wait. 
Nazis, Tim Myers imagined they perceived a statue moving. A statue moving? Uh, far in the back. Wait. Yes. Motion again. Uh, Sun sees it. Where? Alongside reproduction of French guillotine. Oh, but it's right there. I, I see it, Pop. An arm moving there. Come, quick. This is crazy. But I tell you, this statue's are made from sand and glue. Once they set, they can't move. Two eyes may be deceived, Professor Moore. Not four. I think I saw it again, Pop. Yeah, well, maybe it's somebody hanging around there. It's like, you know, sometimes kids sneak in and... Maybe many explanations, but us wait until we arrive before adopting any. Yeah, but you can't think... Wait, it's... Pop. Pop, up there on the guillotine platform. The statue of the victim. His arm is moving. Like the chain. This, this is silence, please. Is it... Is it really a statue, Pop? No. You perceive body of men. Dead men. Apparently, Professor Moore's entertainment of old and education of young includes... Murder. We will return to Charlie Chan in just a moment. Right now, your thoughts are centered on how to keep cool. But you'll thank your lucky stars if you're stocked up on fuel for heating your house. You see, the fuel shortage isn't going to be one whit improved this coming winter. Despite victory in Europe, we've got the deadly Japs to lick. And our war industries will still be calling for staggering quantities of fuel. So coal, oil, gas, wood, and coke for civilian use will continue short. That's why, for your own protection, prepare for winter now. Stock up on whatever kind and amount of fuel your dealer can let you have. And here are a couple more tips. Check your heating equipment to ensure peak efficiency. Clean your furnace. Install heat-saving devices. Also ensure your home against loss of heat by installing insulation, storm doors and windows, weather stripping. By doing these simple things, you'll conserve precious fuel next winter. Get your homes ready for cold weather now. And now, here is Charlie Chan. This case has highly perplexing beginning. Why does Professor Moore deny telephoning this person? If gentleman speaks truth, this interior detective required to discover connection of practical joke with murder. Hope to do so tomorrow. Hope you will join self. Until then, goodbye. Thank you. Sure to join us again tomorrow at the same time for the case of the man who moved mountains. Transcription.